Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this telewebinar, More Value, Less Cost, the top four ways to get the most out of your IoT data. A little bit about Telet. Our mission is clear, connecting the world from the inside out. Those stats in the bottom right, so just some examples of our global success in this endeavor. With over 15 years experience, you can even say tell it's been at this since before IoT was even a term. We offer everything you need, whether it's hardware modules to connect to your things, connectivity data plans to connect those things anywhere in the world, and software platforms to empower you to bring all that IoT data together in one place. Our IoT know-how combination of partners, consulting services, and community members combine to offer our customers powerful IoT-enabled business transformation. Available as a whole or in parts, TELT's unique combination of technologies has been designed to pioneer a successful end-to-end -end system approach that assures that all the pieces of IoT work together seamlessly when connecting things to apps and everything in between. TELT possesses the industry's broadest portfolio of wireless IoT modules, covering cellular technologies like 4G LTE, 3G, 2G, and even one day 5G, Positioning technologies, low power wide area technologies, specially designed automotive communication technologies, Wi Fi, Bluetooth, and even sub one gigahertz bands and wireless M bus. All modules are designed with three key factors in mind longevity to match product life cycles, reduce field support, and lower the total cost of ownership, ensuring your business can count on the line's continued support for years to come. Family form factor, so you can design your hardware once and then use it anywhere in the world. And reliable RF performance. Teller also offers IoT SIM cards and custom data plans with seamless operations throughout different regions and networks around the world. Teller IoT connectivity services are designed specifically for your IoT needs. One agreement, simple terms, and one price with no hidden fees or extra roaming charges. And finally, our software platforms streamline the operation of your solution in key areas of device, connectivity, data, and system management. The platform allows your development team to focus on building apps, not infrastructure. The platform allows you to easily connect your things and enterprise systems together, saving you time and allowing you to get your solution to market quickly. Today's agenda includes four key points how to avoid bill shock on your IoT data plans, how to take advantage of IoT data provider capabilities, ways in which you can derive value quickly and easily from robust IoT data sets on both the device and enterprise edges, and optimizing device design across regions. As for those who will be delivering today's agenda, product managers at Telet are responsible for ensuring our end-to-end -end IoT technology portfolio meets the needs of customers in the market requiring and the market requiring understanding and coordinating of the strategic and tactical elements of the product life cycle including its development roadmap competitive positioning customer needs evolving market requirements and key partner and alliance relationships and for this reason I might not be able to find any Telet team members any more well suited to brief you on key recent technological developments in IoT that, especially for the focus of this webinar, will make a positive impact on IoT data management and your bottom line. Alad, Bill, Marco, from our connectivity platforms and modules PM teams respectively, will be your guide as we explore these technological developments. If you have any questions throughout today's webinar, you can simply type them into the go to webinar question pane. If we have time to get to them at the end of today's webinar, great, we will. But if we don't, we will be sure to follow up with you via email. And with that, I will turn it over to Alad to shed some light on the latest Telet IoT connectivity developments. Hi, hello everyone, and thanks again for joining. So, my name is Alad Awani and uh, I'm the Connectivity Product Manager. And uh, I will present to you two uh, basic features, the Connectivity Dashboards and the Connectivity Triggers, as these two are part of our uh, 
of TELIT CDP Pro solution, the C management solution in the IoT, in TELIT's IoT portal. Okay, so the connectivity dashboard. So, let's check in. Okay, everything works well. Okay, so uh, before diving in to the connectivity dashboard, so seeing is believing, and this is the main view of the connectivity dashboard. You can see that it is comprised of different views, and the, the, the goal of the, of the dashboard is to give you uh, that in one glance, uh, you get the main insights of your deployment. So we will get through each one of the view views, of the views here, but this is the main idea. One look, you understand, okay, this is my deployment. Do I need to take any action? Is everything okay? So, uh, um, uh, why do we need it? So when we manage uh, the connectivity, in, uh, when you manage the connectivity in your organization, you really wish to get a, a, a quick answers to this question. So, how many of my devices are active? Is the a data consumption of my deployment, is it normal? Is, is it according, according to, to, uh, to, what, to what I design? Uh, are my devices located where I expect them to be located? Are they acting normally? And, and, and finally, is, uh, I think there is an issue. What's happening right now? Is everything okay? So we find that, that getting the answers, fast answers, uh, is becoming increasingly more challenging as the deployment uh, uh, scales up, both in size and in data. Okay, so a short uh, overview. Um, so our solution enables you uh, to get insights on various aspects of the deployment. Uh, for example, deployment status, the, the usage, the location of the devices, the roaming, since we're in the roaming business, and, 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 and the high runners, the, the, the high offenders, these specific devices. And, and once you realize that further investigation is required, you can always drill down to the specific view. And finally, if uh, uh, we also provide real-time views that are based on a, on, a, on a radius that is integrated to our, our solution, so if you want to uh, understand how is my deployment performing right now, you can just uh, go and take a look at the real-time views and I will get to them in a minute. Okay, so let's dive in. So what, so what can we see here? Okay, I will go to each one of these views. So the, uh, the deployment status, I can tell how many devices are in the are part of the deployment, how many are activated, how many are, uh, are uh, right now in session, and how many devices we have in total. And we also have a pie chart with the, with the, you can see the different carriers. So meaning if you have uh, uh, devices uh, uh, for one carrier or from AT&T or Telefonica, you can see everything in one view. And this is the, the, uh, uh, the uh, big advantage that you don't have to go and, 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 work with, and work with different platforms from different carriers. Everything is right here. Also, you can see, as you see the devices, you can also see the, uh, exactly the status of your deployment. So, you have the 559 devices, so how many of them are in each state? You can see it over time, and you can see the state changes every day. So you can uh, uh, see exactly how many were activated or deactivated in each, each day on a daily basis. Then you can go and you can see the, uh, uh, you can drill down. If I go back to the main view, right, so in the main view, you can see that you can see uh, uh, the usage and the idea here that you can see a data session SMSs and you can see the trend over the last days. So the idea is that you come and you take a quick look and you look at the trend and you, and you realize if there is a, a, an issue, if everything looks normal. If everything looks normal, okay, nothing is required. 
but if if you you, you think or you see that there is uh, some abnormality or, or or the trend is not uh, according to what you you expect it to be, you can go and drill down, and we will drill down later. Regarding location, so you can you, uh, there is a map here. On the map, you can see the last known location of each of your uh, uh, devices. And uh, once we required, you can uh, drill down. But the idea is that uh, uh, you, uh, from this, just from this view, you can tell. Okay, I can see the devices in, in, uh, in uh, the devices are located in, in where I, I'm sure that they should be lo located, and everything is uh, is okay. If you see a device located in Alaska, maybe let's go and, and check this out. A roaming. So roaming data per country in the last 30 days. So you take a quick look, okay, my devices, they are located in these countries, everything is good. High runners, so these are the high runners, meaning uh, uh, specific devices that consume uh, uh, the most data or consume the most uh, SMSs, and, uh, and you can also switch on a daily, weekly, or a monthly basis. So these are very specific devices. And when I drill down to each one of the, of the views, so you can see here the, the pie chart, of the different carriers and total devices. And as I mentioned before, you can see each one of the, the activation trend and the status and the daily, uh, 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 the daily activations or the activations. If you drill down on the usage, you can see the data traffic, the data session and the SMSs over time. You can see it uh, uh, on a weekly or a monthly depends uh, how 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 do you want to to how much you want to to troubleshoot back the map as I mentioned and you can drill down to every specific device the roaming view so when you drill down you see the data per country and the data per carrier specific per carrier and the high runners the top offenders so the, the, the device, these are specific devices that create the most data, the most data sessions, the, the most uh, SMSs, and the most zero session. A zero session is a device that is actually connecting to the network, opens the PDP, but does not transfer any data at all. And this is not a healthy uh, uh, situation. It probably indicates on an issue, either on device, application, or maybe even a network issue. So these are the, uh, the zero sessions. And the real-time views, so uh, they, uh, the real-time views enables you to see the performance of the deployment right now. Suppose you suspect there is an issue. It is on a five-minute resolution in, and it is a, a, it's a real-time. So you can actually uh, see what's, what's going on with your deployment right now. What's the traffic, the data session, or the roaming information. So again, going back, these are the main views. You first take a look at them. If you require, you go and you drill down. Okay. Let's go to the second topic, the connectivity triggers. So what's a connectivity trigger? So let's take a look at, the, at the one example just to 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 understand what uh, uh, what we are talking about, about. So this is an example for a device that consumed more than, uh, uh, if it consumes over 10 megabyte uh, in the last five days, go in and deactivate the SIM. So this is a very classic uh, a use case for connectivity trigger. And we can think of endless number of use cases for this feature. So uh, uh, usage control per device or per deployment level. Suppose commercially uh, you have a, a plan where uh, the whole deployment has uh, one bucket of one gigabyte. So we can go and, 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 and this is a use case when you, we, we want to monitor on deployment level. A, a abnormal device, so if a, a device is a, a, a behaving uh, abnormal, excessive uh, network regis registrations, for example, so it can create overusage, consume the battery, stress the network, 
we, we want to monitor a, 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 a such a device, theft control, for example, so we can alert if IMEI changed or, or maybe for static devices, if the location changed, this might be an indication. And there are uh, many other use cases for connectivity triggers. So what do we offer in the connectivity triggers? So uh, uh, we add uh, uh, this feature, it's part of the, again, the CDP Pro, the C management solution, and, uh, and we can create a new trigger using a canvas editor, which I'll uh, uh, get right into it and show it, present it. We can, no, no, we can uh, notify upon a trigger that we define via different methods. We can send, once there's a trigger, we can send an email, an SMS, or, or HTTP post, and we can automatically decide to take an action. So if a threshold calls, okay, don't just notify me, but also send, but also deactivate automatically the SIM card. There's a control panel that uh, 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 it's a view where you can see all the triggers. Everything is presented there, and then you can you can control your triggers, activate or start or stop a, a, a trigger. We have a, 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 a library of templates which I will get into, and uh, the usage triggers we base them on CDRs and radius. And radius, since we have it in real time, you can have an immediate uh, uh, indication in real time. So uh, you don't have to uh, 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 get a notification on an issue that uh, it's already too late. So you can get it, some of the triggers based on radius, you can get it actually in real time. And there are many other examples that I will not go through. Let's just skip, let's skip it. Okay, so this is the canvas uh, editor. So it enables you to define a very, to build actually the very specific uh, 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 trigger according to your uh, uh, specific uh, uh, need. Uh, you define the rule, you define the notification method. Here, for example, send, an S send me an SMS and an email and uh, uh, define the follow-up uh, uh, follow action, change the status of the scene, deactivate the scene if there is an issue. the control panel. So you can see that all of the triggers that you've uh, uh, configured, you can see the status of the trigger, you can uh, enable them or disable them, and you get a full visibility of how much each of the trigger was actually working. And the last thing I want, I want to present is the trigger templates. So the idea is that that uh, we don't, uh, we don't, we think that the, the, the standard or the user, a regular user, uh, uh, will not have to use the Canvas editor to configure a, a, a trigger. You need to get some, to gain some experience in that. So we created uh, predefined uh, templates for most of the, uh, the common use cases that we, that we uh, learned that most of our, our customers uh, need. For example, an individual connection using X data over the last uh, Y days. This is a, a template. And you as a user, you go and you tune it up specifically for your needs. So you will, uh, uh, so the user will enter the specific parameters. So for example, uh, uh, you will put uh, 10 megabytes over three days, send, this is the destination, this is what to send to the notification, and then change the, uh, and send, send a notification. So you just need to, to go and, and fill in the, the, the template according to your specific need. And, the, and the, the set of templates that we have, they should cover all of the, most of the use cases, the Pareto at least. So to summarize it, so uh, we had an alerting solution in our uh, 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 IoT platform in the connectivity management part. It is really easy to use via predefined templates library that cover uh, all the common use cases. There is a canvas editor for uh, defining a new trigger. This is, I would say, for advanced users, but we tell it we can also always assist. And there is a full visibility via the control panel. Chris, back to you. All righty, we will get Bill queued up here.
So while while Chris does that, uh, this is Bill Dykus. I'm the IoT platform product manager. I'm going to do a quick, just a quick overview of the platform, and um, and it's really good for what uh, Alad went through because he got to show a number of uh, key screens and components uh, that were specific to the connectivity items, but those those all reside in, inside of our our IoT uh, portal, which is a major component of of our soft our software and services platform. Uh, we have some, so the portal is the the core of a you know of our multi-tenant cloud-based subscription service. So it's a platform that we run in the cloud, um, but we have also over time enabled through some companies we offer private instances of that instead of the multi-tenant version. Um, so what Alad showed you was some of the key screens that related to connectivity, but we have similar items for the actual things and and data points that are actually um, pushing data in, into the cloud uh, system or the portal system. But other key components uh, is that one version is our device-wise for MNOs, which is a, a, a version of the portal that we install in MNOs uh, around the world. And it's caused, enable us to develop the skills to implement robust scalable systems. And we've carried that over into a number of premise-based uh, portal implementations. So for clients that want to maintain a, a um, a portal system in their in their own enterprise, and that enables us then to build on top of that and help them build their applications through our, our key know-how. Other components are is our device-wise for factory, which leverages uh, our, our asset and enterprise gateway technology, which is true on the edge um, integrated uh, edge logic that we have uh, put into a number of. Uh, gateways and programmable logic controllers from key companies around the world, whether it be Rockwell, Siemens, Cisco, Dell, uh, Multitech, et cetera, uh, there's an, that, those technologies enable us to build both on the enterprise edge and on the device edge. And lastly is our, our SecureWise uh, for the semiconductor industry, uh, machine, se semiconductor machines with built-in software from us that enables us to monitor, um, help the machine, um, semiconductor machine builders monitor their equipment. And we're in over 90% of the 300 millimeter fabs around the world with equipment from um, ASML and, and, and others. What we like to focus on from the value add of our platform uh, is the device management and, and connectivity management stuff that a lot of elaborated on. But finally also is the application enablement. And for us, that means helping clients move data, get data from devices uh, because we have the skills to integrate with those devices and collect data, manage that data, transcode that data, and move it into uh, enterprise applications. Enterprise applications that may deal with predictive maintenance, may deal with uh, business process management, uh, but it's critical that when, in, when, when it comes to IoT, um, data is one of our most important elements. And so, what we have, and in this particular case, we're talking how we do that is from, uh, from, from the edge where an enterprise gateway can send data directly into uh, any one of these, these um, enterprise applications, whether it be SAP, Oracle, SAP HANA, uh, all kinds of uh, existing enterprise middleware. And then key to that is our drag and drop enterprise logic. So while Elad showed you the canvas that's built into the cloud, similarly, we have a workbench tool that enables you to program uh, those products on the edge to have true enterprise integration. And then similarly, the portal can do cloud to cloud integration. So we, we give a lot of flexibility uh, for our clients to, to um, have multiple ways of delivering data, whether it be into enterprise applications or into other uh, cloud systems, AWS, HANA, Azure, and any number of others, we have the capability of adding and publishing data uh, into those systems. So when we talk about data, t um, so you, that was just a quick overview of the, the Telet IoT platform, its components, and our, our focus point. And if you have more interest in, in how we do that, we can give you a more extensive presentation. But the rest of today, I'm just gonna talk about some things we've done to enhance the experience. So while we have the capability of publishing data, what we call 
data at rest or, or data in transit, which means we either collect the data and store it in the cloud for, for others to use or deliver it directly to your enterprise application. There are cases where you may want to reduce data uh, transport costs. And this was a special tool that we've developed to enable companies uh, and uh, developers to pull um, bulk volumes of data out and deliver it directly, whether it be into a business intelligence, data analytics, or predictive maintenance tool. Because a lot of times those don't necessarily require real time, um, depending upon what your real time definition is and whether it be minutes or hours or days. But this bulk export enables us to move data in volumes faster and, and more economically. So we have a number of clients that are using this today to in, in particular for business intelligence tools. Next, in terms of data and data sharing, we've launched in the last six months this concept of, of object sharing. And in this particular case, it's either a thing or a connection. The thing being a, uh, a device, whether it be an automobile, in this case, we this is a Tesla that uh, we have attached to the system, or it can be a connection, uh, as elaborated on our, our cellular connection management capabilities in the portal. Any one of those two things uh, can be shared. So what, is, what does it mean to be shared? So one example could be um, you have different organizations uh, set up in your, in your portal. Uh, you could have a, um, if you were a smart city application, you could have a fire department have its own organization. You could have a water department have its own organization. And similarly, the police department. And depending upon the application, uh, say if you're a fire department, you may need to get data to understand water pressures. You may need to get the data to understand to where the police uh, dispatch has sent stuff. So we have the capability of, of sharing data, uh, whether it be read-write or just read-only, between organizations. And this, this picture does a really good job of showing the concept from a, a single thing within Org A. Uh, the owner of Org A owns the thing, owns the, the data that collected from it, but he may need to share it to other places. And, and, and it may be, in this particular case, he's sharing it with organization B, and it's in a, it's in a read-write capability. That person then has the capability, if given the privilege by organization A, to share that data in a, in a read-only, or uh, again, in a, in a read-write um, to org B. And this is something that we're seeing a, a large take up in, in terms of people being able to share and use data, be more flexible in its usage in, in, in terms of and, ma and maintaining ownership of the original thing and the original data set. So operating at the edge, um, we talked in the, in the early part of the presentation, I talked about um, whether, whether our gateway technology in this particular case, and I encourage you to visit our help.devicewise.com page, which is an extensive uh, documentation of, of the whole capability of our portal and our, and our edge technology. The, in the, this particular implementation is the enterprise gateway. It runs on anything. It's a very small footprint device, but and we have a large number of manufacturing assets that we connect to. Some of those listed on the left, left to me, are examples, whether they be PLCs or gateways or RFID readers, uh, uh, torque wrenches, et cetera, uh, as well as your, your traditional um, uh, industrial routers and that might come from a Cisco or, or any number of other companies. The Edge Logic software, in this case, the Enterprise Gateway, which has the implementation to talk to enterprise uh, uh, middleware. In the last six months, we've added the, our direct connection to the IBM Watson platform. This enables clients to have the direct ingestion of machine or sensor data and, and leverage it for you know, whether you're doing tying it into the Watson's predictive maintenance, whether it's being tied into uh, asset tracking or just whatever data that you need and you want to evaluate, we have the capability of delivering that to Watson. And uh, so we're looking at, you know, intelligent assets and equipment and, and what sort of cognitive operations that IBM wants to use uh, with that data. And one of the key comp aspects, and since we're not diving com very deeply into it, is the app is the event logic at the factory edge. Both of our gateway products and, and the cloud, but in this particular case, we can actually program with our Workbench Canvas 
uh, event logic. It's not an SDK in the sense that you're actually programming in, in traditional programming language. It's a, it's a true event action logic system that enables you to set up a whole uh, number of projects inside of it that monitors data and can take action on that data, either transforming it or transcoding it or, or packaging it up for delivery. Um, it has a number of key features, one of them being its store and forward technology, which enables you, if you lose the connection to wherever you're sending the data to, to collect the data um, in a local database uh, and send it in, in, in pre-prescribed um, uh, terms, whether it be last in, first in, out, first, first in, last out. Uh, it just It's all set up and is easily... Um, Clickable. I like to say that uh, the the device-wise system enables has enabled our clients to go from having to integrate everything to be enable them to just configure. So we've gone from config from integration to configuration uh, on the edge. Also, uh, this is just one example of of another device. This and this shows the extreme. Uh, other end of the spectrum. Uh, this is a very small footprint, um, low-cost device from Siemens. It's uh, very open, uh, runs a uh, low um, uh, Linux environment, low footprint, but we're able to take that a same event logic of, the, of, the, of our gateway technology and actually run this at the edge. Uh, so we're very uh, uh, excited to add this, uh, this new platform to our, uh, our pool of devices that we've pre-integrated with, which goes to support my statement that we are more about configuration than, have, than integration for our customer. We've, uh, so the software runs on this, uh, you just download it and add it, and then however you want to manage the data coming through the Siemens IoT 2000, you can. And then I encourage you to go, again, go out to help out device We have an extensive list of devices that we've pre-integrated our software and we test it extensively with. Uh, a little bit of the user management. Uh, we're gonna. Uh, this is uh, this is my last slide before we transition to uh, Marco Argentin on our, our module team. You know, not only are we dealing with uh, having to deal with uh, data and its management, but we're also having to deal extensively with user management. Also, um, we've added uh, the capability of having Active Directory, which is an L the LDAP technology, so that. Um, Clients can establish control over access to these to our software systems through the Active Directory. Um, they may be running in their as their main system in their in their plant. So our implementation enables you to set up roles, identical roles that would be managed in the in the main Active Directory. Those roles um, within the, the gateways have extensive granularity of, of user role control. So once that's set up with the proper role name, the access to that role is managed through uh, the domain controller of Active Directory. So in, in conclusion, um, as a, we move on the, between our connectivity and our uh, platform services, uh, we offer very extensive um, data uh, management, enterprise integration, and helping our clients uh, configure their systems to to, to operate and enhance their business processes. Um, Marco? Yes, <clears throat> thanks, Bill. Just a second that I take control. Yeah, Chris is we are ready to go. Chris yes. is on that for you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm ready and uh, uh, again, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Marco Argenton, uh, product marketing for uh, IoT devices, and this is exactly what I'm going to tell you uh, today. Uh, let's go to yeah. So you already have seen this slide at the beginning, uh, um, explained by Chris. Uh, you know already that Telit has uh, the broadest portfolio in the industry, so I will not repeat myself. Uh, in explaining which are all the technologies and the possibilities uh, uh, that you can find in our portfolio. But the idea today is uh, really to take you through a journey of uh, six months that will last only 20 minutes today, but it's just a summary of all the achievements and new products that we have introduced in the market uh, in the 
second part of last year. And this is also the proof uh, of uh, uh, all the technologies that we handle. Uh, uh, as you can see in this uh, initial summary, uh, we uh, have introduced uh, news uh, and solutions uh, in, in Wi-Fi or from Bluetooth to, to LoRa or from GNSS to um, the cellular uh, technologies uh, uh, with all the possible uh, uh, flavors of it. So really this is a massive uh, um, effort that the company is putting uh, uh, into the devices that are the enablers of all the other uh, services and solutions that my colleagues Elad and Bill have explained before. So let's go one by one to see which are the relevant. Uh, no ambition to be exhaustive and, and comprehensive of all the things that we did, but really I try to put here uh, all the major news for all the technologies. So let's start with Wi-Fi. And uh, uh, I will also tell you something uh, something new that is coming uh, soon uh, in the next uh, quarters this year and not only what we did uh, uh, last year uh, but starting from that uh, the major news in the Wi-Fi portfolio was not really the introduction of a new device but the introduction of a new platform software update and the reason for this is that uh, as you know um, Telit uh, uh, acquired the, the, the portfolio of, of Gainspan from, for the Wi-Fi technology and uh, both the GS2200 and the 2101 are devices that we have inherited from, uh, from this um, uh, company and uh, um, with the software uh, improvement that uh, Telit team did on top of it uh, Yes, for sure, there are news about, uh, for example, MQTT or uh, the introduction of uh, web sockets uh, or uh, announcements for security. But the main one that I want to highlight uh, is the device-wise uh, cloud integration, because really this is representing uh, the milestone that makes these devices being part uh, of the Telit portfolio uh, at the same level of all the other cellular uh, devices, for example, that are already enabled with the cloud agent uh, to dialogue uh, natively with our platform. So, uh, sorry for the transition is a bit slow from one slide to another, but uh, if we look at the uh, overall portfolio, uh, the devices that I just mentioned, together with the WE866, uh, that is the LT companion for our uh, Elin N10 V2 series, uh, are the devices that are already available in production and that you can order and implement in your solutions. Uh, what's, uh, what's coming? Well, uh, a lot of things are coming uh, this year, uh, in particular two devices. Uh, uh, in one case, um, the W. E866 uh, E4 uh, is uh, a combo Wi-Fi and BLE um, dual band, so uh, to the 4 and 5 gigahertz, and uh, um, with the possibility of an external antenna. On the other side, the brother of this uh, of this device is a smaller one, uh, not combo, only Wi-Fi, but with the chip antenna integrated. So, two new uh, devices that are. Um, becoming available in mass production around June timeframe in the first case and September timeframe in the second case with, of course, the samples available uh, earlier. And then also the introduction of two additional devices in order to support uh, uh, Wi-Fi 11 AC. Once again, uh, a combo solution with Bluetooth uh, uh, 4.2. And also in this case, two solutions, one with the uh, integrated antenna and one with the external antenna. Uh, also, in this case, uh, June and September are the two uh, time frames for these new devices. So, uh, really, a sneak peek, an eye level overview. Uh, this is what I'm going to do also for the other technology technologies, but just to give you an idea of uh, uh, the continuous effort that we do, both on maintenance of existing solutions and uh, innovation and introduction of new devices. I uh, said something about a combo with uh, Bluetooth or BLE. Well, this is because of the nature of the devices that I just introduced, but uh, as you know, uh, or if you don't know, I'm telling you right now, uh, we have also 
solutions that are pure Bluetooth uh, and so standalone uh, um, devices. And uh, the first one I want to talk to you today is the Blue Mode S42. That is a Bluetooth 4.2. Uh, this is a, a module that uh, is uh, 17 by uh, 10 millimeters in LGA form factor that is available in mass production since December last year. And um, also in this case, I don't want to go through all the different uh, uh, characteristics and technical information that you can find in our website, but I want to highlight just one thing that is uh, the uh, possibility to have uh, the Lua scripting language inside the uh, device. And this is important for uh, hostless uh, applications, as you can understand. So once again, uh, um, an effort uh, in the direction of the integration. Uh, I will spend a few words later on on our Appson uh, uh, offering, uh, and uh, this uh, uh, is exactly going in the same direction of uh, um, giving you the possibility to embed uh, your simple application into our devices. There is also another um, device that you can find in our portfolio that is the S42M that is another Bluetooth uh, uh, solution. The difference compared to this one is uh, the uh, availability on the same footprint, on the same space, uh, the availability of uh, um, a three axis accelerometer and uh, a sensor for temperature and humidity. So once again, depending on which are your needs, uh, you can scale uh, the solution, uh, choose compatible products in terms of footprint in our portfolio. On one side you have the maybe let's call it high-end solution with uh, uh, computational capabilities and, and scripting power. On the other side instead you have a more complete solutions also embedding uh, sensors. <clears throat> let's go to the next slide that is still on Bluetooth. In this case uh, we are talking about a very small uh, radio uh, integrated uh, uh, with integrated ceramic antenna and uh, uh, offering a standardized host controller interface over UART. This means that uh, uh, if you want uh, to um, enable Bluetooth connectivity on your application, you can run uh, the Bluetooth stack on the external uh, microcontroller and uh, um, bundle it with uh, this. Uh, um, a small module uh, for the radio interface. Uh, we will leverage this uh, feature uh, in order to introduce uh, this year also the possibility to bundle this device with our LTE solution, again the Alien and 10 series. Uh, we already have this offering, as I said before, for the Wi-Fi bundling. This will be the next step that is coming this year for the Bluetooth bundling. So, the idea is to have a coherent and consistent offering uh, in order to support all the technologies and all the possible bundles because uh, we realize that more and more uh, the applications require more than one technology into uh, the same device and the device, of course. Few words on LoRa because uh, uh, we don't have uh, only uh, licensed spectrum uh, technologies, but we support also the unlicensed. Uh, when we believe that there is a, a potential of the technologies, of course, Telit is, uh, is always doing it, and uh, uh, we support uh, LoRaWAN with the RE866. You might be aware of the 866 form factor from the cellular portfolio, that is the smallest one in our. Uh, roadmap. In this case, uh, we use the, the same uh, footprint uh, of the uh, cellular modules uh, to develop this uh, LoRa device uh, that actually is not only LoRa, is a combo LoRa, BLE and NFC. And if you remember a few slides before, I mentioned the WE866 uh, that is on the same form factor, a Wi-Fi solution. But let's stay for a second on this one. This is available in mass production since December last year, and it has been certified uh, according the specification of LoRa 1 uh, uh, version 1.01, and in Q1 this year it will be upgraded to 1.02. And uh, uh, it is exactly uh, the solution that uh, uh, we want to offer 
for all the opportunities uh, that uh, we are um, uh, realizing being relevant in different countries uh, worldwide where the operators are going in a different direction or where you may be interested in a local network uh, for this kind of technology. There will be also a variant that is not uh, uh, combo LoRa BLE, but LoRa only, that will be more cost effective, of course. GNSS, another uh, historical uh, pillar of our offering. Uh, we are um, consolidating our portfolio and uh, in this case uh, I wanted to uh, highlight uh, two major news uh, that we have introduced uh, last year. In fact, also in this case, we are talking about a device that is new, but already available in mass production. That is the SL876. That is very small because it's 11 by 11 and featuring a, a chip antenna. So um, really compact. The antenna is omnidirectional. Uh, another interesting aspect is that it is working at 1.8 volt uh, and we have realized that this, this is a major trend uh, in particular in North America and in other regions. There is not only an integrated uh, um, antenna but there is also an internal RF switch uh, in case you want to design your solution with uh, an external antenna. And in terms of uh, uh, power consumption, uh, in our portfolio I would say that this is the best compromise in terms of battery power or current consumption, um, as you prefer to call it, and the performance of, of the tracking. Uh, needless to say that this is a quad constellations device, so it is supporting uh, both GPS and GLONASS and Galileo and, and Beidou. If this was uh, uh, featuring an omnidirectional uh, chip antenna, this is instead featuring a patch antenna that is uh, directive, uh, of course, uh, in the direction uh, where it is polarized, uh, the, the performance will be much better. And uh, um, the size of this device is 18 by 18. This is uh, new, not yet in mass production, but really coming uh, Q1, but I was told by my colleagues of the uh, product management of uh, uh, location solutions that uh, uh, we already have samples of this device. And this is another alternative for a quad constellation uh, solutions. Uh, and uh, the main feature here is uh, really the, uh, the consumption, because uh, if the previous one was a good compromise between performance and current consumptions, consumption, this is really based on the platform that is offering the lowest current consumption. Just a few words on features, not just on devices. Uh, another popular feature in the uh, GNSS industry is the dead reckoning. We have this feature already available with the product SL869 ADR, and we have it uh, available with the class Sick dead reckoning uh, that is leveraging uh, a physical signal of the wheel tick uh, and, and the reverse that are injected, uh, uh, wired and injected into the module. We are also developing uh, a, um, the so called sensor link DR, so there is no need for the physical uh, connection of the wheel tick, but the information will be transferred via UART to the module, so this will be be an upgrade of the existing device with this um, additional feature and this is uh, something that is that is new and that is coming soon in our portfolio and in parallel to that uh, we are also introducing the MEMS only DR or the so-called MODR so no need for external sensor all the calculation and the prediction is done internally into the device and the name of this new uh, product will be SL869V8M. So this was really a, in a rush uh, an overview of all the non-cellular technologies of our portfolio. Let's spend a few words uh, on uh, the cellular part. Uh, last but not least, let me say, 
Um, these are devices and products that uh, partially I already introduced uh, in the same webinar of this type that we had last year. If I remember well, it was around May timeframe. So here I will tell you uh, not the fact that we have introduced new products, but which are the achievements that we have uh, uh, got and, and reached with uh, these new devices. So the Emine 10 series is our uh, most important uh, solution uh, um, that is a dual mode device, both supporting CATM1 and Narrowband IoT. Uh, where required, uh, it is also uh, optionally supporting the GSM fallback in the case of the uh, variant for EMEA, uh, because we know that the 4G coverage is not as good as in US. And uh, talking about US, uh, we have an offering of devices both for Verizon and AT&T. And the news uh, uh, since last time that we talked uh, is that uh, we got the approvals from both AT&T and Verizon on the M1 uh, um, LTE only solutions. So uh, we have already customers that are integrating these devices and going through their certification process and deployments. We will introduce also a product that is a single SKU. So you don't need to have two variants for the two operators, but you can leverage both with one device only. And in this slide, I wanted to put also the Australian variant because this is another important achievement. Um, as you know, the operator Telstra in Australia is always one of the first together with AT&T and Verizon to be innovative and pushing the market into the new direction. And uh, um, they selected last year uh, Telit as a uh, one of the first companies to, to go in their lab and we are uh, definitely the first uh, that was able to get the approval from uh, from Telstra um, on the eminent and C1AU that you can see in the table uh, below. These are not only the variants that you can find uh, in this series, uh, we are introducing in Q1 this year also the global variant uh, because uh, with this uh, platform, we have the possibility to offer also this kind of configuration. So in case you need to deploy your products uh, all over the world, uh, or for logistic reasons, uh, uh, you don't want to have different SKUs, you can uh, buy this uh, product that uh, will be able to support all the frequency bands, and then we can switch the software according to the region or according to the carriers that you want to address. We were talking about uh, products that are M1 and Urban IoT. If uh, you already know that your application is not going to require uh, mobility or your is not going to require voice in the future, and so you can live with very few uh, data uh, on a stationary application and uh, you want a more cost-effective solution, these are the products that probably are uh, the best uh, fit for you. And uh, we already talked about the NE866 last year. We have introduced also the NL865 because um, it is a popular form factor in Telit for GSM. So we wanted to give uh, a migration path to all the customers that wanted to prepare themselves from 2G to narrowband IoT. And uh, the major news here is the certification both for the RED Directive and, uh, in most important, the GCF. Because you might remember that uh, in 2017, there was still a lot of uh, doubts uh, about the possibility to certify the new uh, um, devices. Well, now we have solutions that are certified, so you can go for it if you are interested. I just uh, introduced the form factor 865. Well. Um, if you are based on GSM, for example, and uh, you want to move uh, to the, the latest technology, the other news is that we have introduced the ML865. So on the contrary, if narrowband IoT is not enough, uh, but you need a dual mode, for example, uh, you can have CATM1 with 2G fallback on this new uh, product series that will be available uh, for both uh, uh, North American market and uh, European, uh, Asia Pacific and Latin America and uh, samples of this uh, new product will be available uh, in Q1 this year. The other important aspect is that uh, if you feel that the 910 form factor is too big, uh, this uh, solution is more compact. So we always want to give more options to our customers to develop their designs. 
Um, just a few words uh, on the uh, CAT1 and CAT4 uh, technologies uh, that are, of course, the most uh, versatile and mature in 4G that you might be already familiar with. Uh, on top of the uh, ALE 10 V2 series uh, that we have in mass production already since uh, several time, um, you might have seen that we have introduced uh, also a few new series uh, that are called C1. The first one is for North America, but with global roaming in case of telematics application, full roaming, uh, full fallback in 3G and 2G. There is also one for Asia Pacific and especially for Australia and New Zealand with 3G fallback, one for Sprint, and the major news are coming in 2018, a variant for Europe and a variant again for North America, but in particular supporting the band 14 that is for public safety really a major um, innovation this year and we want to be there uh, in this market with you uh, other technical as aspects sorry that are relevant for this series is that uh, there is Volti support and uh, there is uh, the integrated GNSS test in case you might want a combo solution without the external device And to finish, we have also, I talked about low end, I talked about CAT1 and CAT4 that are more or less in the middle. We have also high end devices. Here I'm presenting to you a new device that uh, we are uh, introducing in the market right now that is a CAT11. So really high throughput in the form factor of a mini PCIe and with a global coverage in terms of bands, as you can see from the table. And then, of course, all the certifications that will allow you to deploy in different countries according to the different uh, regulations that you will find. Let me see if this slide is transitioning. So, in terms of summary of the major milestones, I already mentioned uh, most of them. Uh, don't forget that we still have uh, 3G devices in mass production that you are buying from us and that we are keeping in maintenance um, and working on it. So, it's not only new things, but also uh, legacy stuff. And uh, the proof of this is that, uh, for example, for the software uh, baseline 1208, uh, of our 3G offering we got in 2017 uh, an additional approval from Vodafone. Then, as I said, we got uh, for the cat one devices the approvals from Verizon, AT&T and Telstra, the GCF for the narrowband IoT devices, and the Volti approval of our Elin and 10 solutions, both CAT1 and CAT4 for AT&T and Verizon. On top of that, uh, once again, AT&T with Volti for the C1NA, Sprint approval for the correspondent uh, variant uh, for, for this operator and the Telstra approval for the C1AP that is LTE category 1 with 3G fallback. Once again AT&T and Verizon also for the high end. So as you can see all the major carriers, all the major countries are uh, covered so you are really uh, good to go with uh, independently on the technologies that uh, that you will choose for your devices. Just a few words, not only on, uh, sorry, one slide back, uh, not only on devices, but on features. Uh, you know for sure how lightweight M2M is becoming the standard de facto when we talk about device management. So this will be our standard de facto offering in all the new devices. This is just a, a slide to show you a couple of uh, demos that we did uh, last year. Uh, one was with AT&T in their CAT M1 network with our M10 device, and the other one was in Barcelona for the IoT Solution World Congress uh, with Vodafone and their narrowband IoT live network. In both cases, we were able to run with the same device and with our embedded software for Lightweight M2M, the device management connecting the devices to our portal, the portal that uh, uh, Bill and uh, Elad described before. Last but not least, uh, you might have seen the press release that we recently uh, sent out uh, about uh, IoT AppZone 4.0 with all the announcements uh, that we have introduced uh, in uh, the SDK and the, in the tools uh, and the environment uh, for the um, uh, embedded 
the applications. So really this is becoming a, a major plus in our portfolio, not only for the cellular devices. I mentioned before the Lua scripting for the Bluetooth. We will do Appzone also on the Wi-Fi devices and we really want to increase the number of solutions where this additional capability uh, can allow you to save money, to save space uh, in your product because you don't have to mount an additional microcontroller. And uh, we really believe that this is uh, an important pillar in our end-to-end -end strategy to uh, go from the sensor through the module and the connectivity to the portal uh, and, and manage all the data that you can, that you can control. This was my last slide. Uh, sorry if I went a bit longer, five minutes, I think, but I end over to Chris, our moderator today, and thank you again for listening. All righty. Thank you, Marco. Let me take control here. All right, perfect. So I'll just do a little wrap-up section here, two or three more slides, um, just to, to give you some more information about our products and services. Fortunately, we're not going to get to the Q&A section today, but again, during this time, if you have any questions, you can type them into the GoToWebinar pane, and we can get to them after the webinar. We can reach you by email. So type those in there, or you'll see a link to contact us at the end of the presentation. All right, so we hope you enjoyed this exploration into some of IoT's latest advancements in products and services applicable in a wide spanning range of application areas and industry segments. Uh, I mean, I think I would say the key takeaway here is that our, our teams of Teled IoT experts have indeed designed, pioneered, and deployed to much customer success, a, a successful end-to-end -end system approach that assures that all pieces of IoT work together seamlessly when connecting things to apps. After all, that is what truly sets IoT vendors apart. This has, webinar has been a feature of one specific aspect of our 12 different areas of IoT expertise, knowledge sharing. Another key aspect of knowledge sharing is our university program. The Tellit IoT University offers four-day classes to executives of all backgrounds and expertise, with expertise, which teaches the skills needed to create, deploy, administer, and maintain commercial IoT deployments. We find that people always walk away saying how they have plenty of ideas they can start implementing once they get back to work. We hope you can join us for one of our sessions in sunny Boca Raton, Florida. That's what those four classes, the first four classes are, are held at. Or maybe even as the faculty ventures overseas to tell its Trieste, Italy office. That's where that April 16th class will be occurring, Trieste, Italy. In addition, another one of our offerings to do with Telet IoT know-how is our Telet IoT guidance. Telet can help review your current architecture, assess your needs, map out an end-to-end -end IoT system plan, and also provide proof of concept creation capabilities. So again here, as we wrap up, if you're interested in that consultation conversation I was talking about in the last slide, you can simply raise your hand in the GoToWebinar uh, pain on the right hand side of your screen. You also are able to contact us at telet.com slash contact dash us. And this is the end of the webinar. Again, if you have any questions, please put them in the webinar pane. We'll leave it open for you a little bit longer if you'd like to go that route. 